The price action is only one part of the story, the underlying tech is where it's going. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, first and foremost, uh, it's a real pleasure to be asked um, to come down and to, uh, to have a little chat, to speak. Um, I'm always really appreciative of meeting anybody in the community. Um, at the end of the day, we're all in this together, and it really is the start of something wonderful. Um, first of all, who here has ever heard of SVK Crypto? Okay, who has not ever heard of SVK Crypto? Okay, that hurts, that really hurts. But hopefully we're gonna change that a little bit today. Um, I think I've got maybe 20 minutes. I don't know if we've got time for some Q&A, but um, I thought really it's probably best that um, I take this time to just tell you our story and what we are and what we do. Um, and I think it's really important as well to see just how far we've come in this short period of time. So, um, First of all, we do have a Telegram group. It's a very active Telegram group. If you're not already in our Telegram, please come and join it. It's the way that you actually find me. Um, and if you've got a project, um, or you've got an idea, or you're looking for information, or you just want to share with our community what you're doing or ask some questions, please all feel free to join our Telegram group. So, um, very quick intro on myself. Um, I have been an investment professional for 18 years here in the city of London, originally from Dublin. Um, before I set up SVK, uh, I was a portfolio manager for one of the largest hedge funds here in London. That hedge fund was called Bluecrest Capital Management, and I actually became the youngest managing partner at like 32 years old. And it wasn't necessarily because of the school that I went to or who I knew. It was because I had the ability to spot opportunity and act upon it. And that opportunity, I believe, has never been better with what we're looking at with cryptocurrency and blockchain technology now. So, SVK Crypto. Who are we? What do we do? What do we believe in? What's our view? How do we get there? SVK, SVK Crypto is a community-driven investment firm based here in London, in Shoreditch. We focus on blockchain technologies and digital assets globally. We are community-driven because, for me, when I set up SVK Crypto, Alongside my partner, we really realized that it was about building a community. And I really believe that the, the word money is power is quickly dissolving. We believe community is power. And in order to build any type of business protocol project going forward, you have to have a community. You have to have a community that like and share. You have to have a community that add. You have to have a like community that engage. We're all looking to see blockchain become adopted, and it will become adopted with community. Community drives everything. It's the epicenter of success. At SVK Crypto, we've recently just partnered up, as some of you, some of you may know in the room, with a company called Block One. Block One are the creators of EOS. They had raised a staggering amount of money uh, in the largest token generation event in history. What Block One have decided to do with a proportion of that capital is invest into venture capital firms around the world, which will then, of course, source deal flow, which will use the EOSIO protocol. We are the fifth investment that they have made for the sum of $50 million. We're really happy that they've looked at SVK Crypto and they've looked at London as a place where they want to co-invest. The EOS VC, there is also Galaxy Digital, Mike Novogratz, I'm sure a lot of you will know, and there's also Eric Schmidt, who is the ex-CEO of Google, is also one of the venture capital firms. And I'll talk about the fund maybe towards the end, but how did we do that? How did we get into a situation where we are now one of the largest venture funds in the UK focusing solely on crypto and blockchain? And it all started from a very, very, very small idea, and that idea was to to work 24-7, 365 on building a brand and building community. And with that, we did that in several different ways. Uh, we started a blog. It was, I think, some, somewhere back in 2016. Uh, coming from the financial background, coming from 
the equity world, coming from, from the hedge fund industry, we knew that there was a lot of people in finance and we really understood that there was, there was a real lack of, of knowledge which what was currently going on in crypto. So the first thing that we decided to do was we decided to, once we obviously got involved into cryptocurrency and blockchain, is that we wanted to tell everybody, right? It's, it's, it's the first thing that you want to do after you put on your trade. You want to get everybody in. It's exciting. And we did that by starting a blog. Uh, the blog went from 300 people to about 3,000 people, and we do that every day. We also started a Twitter account. Uh, feel free to follow us, we'll follow you back. Um, we really like Twitter because it's a way that not only can we get the news of what's currently going on, but also we follow a lot of, a lot of uh, other venture capital firms and we're very interested to see who they follow. Um, we, have, we have numerous different tools that allows us to see uh, who follows who and it allows us to really dig in deep. It's a real good source of, of, of research and as I said, we're active on Twitter, so please follow us, we'll follow you back. Um, because we didn't think we were busy enough, we decided to start a podcast. And um, with regards to the podcast, we wanted to find a way that we could continue to build community. Community not just here in, in London, which we so actively do, but community around the world. We're big components of, of audio because it's passive. Um, we started our 15 minutes of crypto fame, which was... I suppose a little bit tongue-in-cheek on, on Andy Warhol where he said everyone in the future would be famous for 15 minutes. When we were looking at a podcast, we really wanted to have a podcast that was informative, um, a podcast that gave us a platform to interview other people in, in, in the space and to get other projects down. We like a podcast because it's not just London or the UK, but it's, it's global. Um, we started doing that over 220 shows. We don't do it monthly or weekly. We actually do it every day and uh, we do it for 15 minutes every day, and we have never missed a day since we've started. Recently, uh, Inc. Magazine have reached out to us and have uh, notified us that we are now in the top 15 podcasts from Inc. Magazine, not just in crypto or blockchain, in Inc. Magazine, full stop. We come in at number four. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great honor for Inc. Magazine to pick us up on what we do, but. Um, as I said, we do it each and every day, no matter where in the world we do it, and we're, we're really proud of that. Um, initially, in order to communicate internally, we had a Telegram chat. Um, it was just the six of us in the office communicating. Our Telegram chat has now grown to 1,300 people, I think, last count, and it's got some amazing people within that community. Um, we've got some of the other larger funds. We've got some of the guys from the exchanges. Um, we've also got uh, a lot of great projects, uh, thought leaders, um, and it's a way for us all to communicate and share content. Um, so if, uh, if any of you pop in and say hello, I'll, I'll, I'll sure I'll reply. Active on YouTube because really when we came into the space, we were all on a hunt for knowledge. I think initially um, how I got involved in the space was that um, I was sitting at my desk and I had just read an article about, about uh, in Forbes magazine about Bitcoin and how it had risen like a phoenix. And it had arisen like a phoenix out of the Mt. Gox debacle, which we're all very aware of how that exchange unfortunately got hacked. At that stage, uh, when Bitcoin had got down to about $150, I thought it was gone. I, I thought that thing was dead. And I was so surprised back in 2016 when I pulled up my Bloomberg and to see Bitcoin go through $1,000. For me personally, it took me a matter of seconds to put on the trade. Well, it took me a matter of seconds to pull the trigger to know that I want to put on the trade. Actually getting the trade on took, took several days. Um, for me, when I looked at, at Bitcoin originally, it was like a digital gold. Um, I knew it was uh, a type of product that institutional money could get comfortable with, certainly first and foremost. And what was really important to me was that I had a finite program supply. So fixed supply, demand increasing, price is only going to go one way. So we initially got into this space by buying $100,000 worth of Bitcoin at $1,000. Um, actually, when I went to buy it, as I said, it took me several days um, because it wasn't just like ringing a broker. It wasn't just like picking up the phone and you get filled as you would in an equity trade. Um, we had to go and go through the painstaking task of opening an account with a, with a cryptocurrency exchange. That's kind of interesting because when you look at crypto and you look how, how we invest and how we deploy capital into the space, it reminds me of going back to the internet in 1993. 
not just from the tech side, but for the people with gray hair in the room, I'm sure you'll all, I'm sure you'll all remember this, but actually getting onto the internet back in the day. But technology never goes backwards. It always moves forwards. And when we look at how we all connect to the internet to today, you pull out your phone and you hit one button called Google, and you almost get irate if you don't get connected right away. You almost get irate that the Wi-Fi in the hotel is not working, or you don't have a passcode. That's taken 20 years to adopt that. And crypto and blockchain will also have those in-ramps and on-ramps. It, it will become part of our everyday lives with how we transact. And we believe that we are only getting started in this. And all the problems that we have with capital, with exchanges, with, of course, regulatory environment, transparency, all things that we welcome in, 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 into the space will all get resolved. But it's wonderful to see so many people here so early on in the space because, remember, when we look back at the, the internet boom, it really was an internet boom that was capitalized by your typical venture capital firms on the West Coast. Um, it was very much an investment banking, proprietary access only type movement. And what we've seen with crypto and blockchain is a real breaking down of that. The ability for projects, very early stage projects with ICOs, to be able to go out and fundraise at this stage and not going to the top five or 10 funds, but going to the public. Um, one ICO that, that we were in discussions with quite recently was telling me that they had over 136 countries subscribe, uh, everything from $100, $100 to $100,000. And that distribution, I think, is really, really attractive, that it's open for everyone. We're breaking down, we're breaking down the walls. So with starting two years ago and putting our own money to work, putting um, our own neck on the line. Um, I was approached by a lot of different people in the space, um, especially as the market started to, to rise last year. Um, I want to get in, I want to invest in you, um, I want to find a way to do it. And I wasn't interested in taking any external capital. Um, we were very happy doing what we do. We were deploying capital into the space, proprietary capital. We were building out communities. Um, we also realized that it was about the give back. And with regards to our community, building it on Twitter and on Telegram and on YouTube. And also, we host the largest monthly meetups in London, and we do it every month. If anybody's here on the 19th of September, uh, 6 o'clock at WeWork in Moorgate, um, we are going to have an amazing meetup with Jamie Burke from Outlier Ventures and also a guy called Rob Finch, who runs a ICO alert from Pittsburgh is, is coming in. But my point being with, with, with all the different social medias is that it got us to a point whereby when Block One and when the creators at Vios were looking to invest into a venture capital fund, they wanted to find a fund that had that community. And all the hard work and all the late nights um, and all, all the speaking and arrangements have all led us to where we are today. Uh, as I said, I'm really pleased to be launching Cryptagon EOS. It is a fund for $50 million. Um, it, will be, it will be a fund which will solely focus on early stage projects that will utilize the EOS IO blockchain and platform protocol. Um, if anybody is building out on EOS, uh, please come and see me. Um, if, if there is other people in the room that are, that are looking to do an ICO and it's not on EOS, uh, please come and see me. We open up our community to everybody because we really realize that this is the start of something quite amazing. And when you look at the price, which I'm sure a lot of people here are very interested in, the market capitalization today was, I think, $170 billion. That was about 10 minutes ago. So it could be... It could be it could be a little bit changed from that now. But the price is only one half of the story. The price that we've seen in cryptocurrency and blockchain markets are driven by sentiment. It's a sentiment-driven market. And what drives sentiment? Emotion. That drives sentiment. And what type of emotions drive that? Well, fear and greed. And greed goes through the market so much quicker than, than fear. It's obviously gone from 
cryptocurrency and blockchain technology market capitalization at the start of 2017 was $20 billion. It sounds like a lot, it's not. It wasn't really on anyone's radar, certainly the financial institutions. By the end of 2017, it got up to 800 billion. That's a 40x increase. That catches a lot of people's attention. And of course, the markets come back down for that. But I'm not really interested in the price action. That's not important. What is important is the underlying tech that's being developed and what we've seen with regards to the protocols, the ramps in, all the plumbing, all the infrastructure being built in the space. It's nothing short of amazing. So when I see the markets under pressure, when I see the markets come right down, I'm the happiest that I've ever been because it's like I got another bite of the apple. It's like you've just gone past your, your favorite store and now everything is on sale. I know where this is going. Like the writing is on the wall. It's not going to get there in a straight line. It never does. There's going to be volatility in the market. So for us, we think it's a wonderful time to, to be investing. Um, we have a, a, a probably a 10-year view on the space and it's going to be binary. I'm either going to be really wrong and I'm going to have to go get a real job or we're all really right and we've been here since day one and we've all had the opportunity to own something of it. It's like going back into the, to the late 80s and early 90s and owning a piece of the internet. So what I would say is please come into our community, please follow us, come to our meetups, hang out. Um, I'm always open to help in any way that I can. And then I think also what we got to do is we got to continue to learn. It's so funny, I look at LinkedIn all the time and I see the amount, the amount of people that I see that are ICO experts and I'm like, wow, that's really interesting, an ICO expert. We're not experts, we'll never be experts because the market's always changing, it's always developing and we're always learning. So um, I think on that note, um, I hope you have a lovely day. Um, it's been wonderful, so thank you very much for having me here. And if I can do anything to help anyone, please let me know. But remember, the price action is only one part of the story. The underlying tech is where it's going. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course I do. How are you? What's your name? Good, Andre. Actually, we met in Vilnius. Oh, just we did, yeah. 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 yeah, I remember. Yeah. How's, how's it going? Let me, let me just grab a cup of tea. Uh, Demand TV is an open source uh, platform. So okay, it's, it's an open source platform. That's it. And at what stage are you currently on, Andre? Is the entity currently <laughs> situated? So In California, in okay. Cyprus, our entity team in Ukraine. Okay. So this is how we are. And approximately how much capital were you going to require? What was your kind of soft and hard cap? hundred million dollars. Okay, that scares me. We, we, we are solely focused on mm -hmm. projects which will utilize EOSIO. You have my card. Yes. Send me everything that you need and let me know when you're at that stage of, of looking at a blockchain. If there's anything I can do to help you out on regards to this. looking as we speak. Excuse me? You're looking as we speak? Okay. Yes, yes, well, yes. I think your tech team need to make that decision because... Uh, of course, but how we can uh, actually put uh, uh, our tech team with, uh, with, with your tech team? Is uh, it possible? It, uh, I mean, with your tech team in London. It, we, we, would need to, we would need to review your technical white paper as it stands right now. Oh, yeah, okay, got it. Um, got but it. if you want to send me an email, I'm happy to do that, so... I will follow up on this one. Okay. Uh, hey, thank you very much. Yeah, lovely lovely you. to see you. Yeah, um, um, I've always got time for you. Thank you very much. How are you? Can I introduce you yeah. to um, Thomas? It's David. Hey, Thomas. How are you? Uh, we are being very ambitious and um, setting up a retail, uh, so retail versus professional uh, fund. I got it. So, um, I've got loads of questions. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. What's the relationship between all three of you? Um, tell, tell me about that. How are you guys all connected? What's your background? What have you done since? So, I, I'm, a, I'm a property professional. I, uh, I'd say a um, year and a half ago, you know, we all realized that, well, we can assume that we have one life, maybe more, we right. don't know. That's the, the name of the entity, yeah, Coinhub. Coin Hub. Okay. Yeah, Coin God, I, can't, I can't believe that hadn't been taken already. It's a great I name. I, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I, won't tell you, I won't tell you how I came across it. Okay. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's I think I, I think, I think yeah, I know yeah, the idea. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but um, but it's, we're all about accessibility. So right now we we know that the market is um, is skewed. Will it be a tokenized fund? It's a, secu it's a, it's a tokenized security. Tokenized security. Okay. Um, how long do you think? Um, it is going to take you to, uh, you haven't submitted anything yet? Nothing. Okay. How long do you think it's going to take from the time that you f submit to the time that you get reviewed and hopefully that you're lucky yeah. and you get, a, you get regulatory approval? It's, it, it's difficult to know because again, we're going in, in, into uncharted. Um, okay, well you've got to have an idea on your roadmap. Like you yeah, like, DLA, DLA are, are reckoning between 12 yeah. and 18 months. Yeah. We do two very separate 
but actually combine things. <coughs> At the core of the business is allocating capital, venture capital, into very early stage projects. Mm -hmm. um, equ equity stakes, this is not a token fund, mm -hmm. typical VC. Um, the mandate for that capital deployment yeah. is projects which will utilize the EOS IO. Yeah, I read the, the platform. Apart from two sides of the business. Yeah. One is the venture capital side, deploying yeah. capital into this place. Yeah. The second side of it is actually the community-driven approach that we have. Yeah. We give back and do so much for the London blockchain, crypto and currency space. And that we do a lot for the community because for us, it's all about growing the community. And how do you do that? You do it by education, right? You do it by give backs, you do it by bringing people together. Yeah. Um, so um, we'd love to bring you into that type of community. Yeah. And if your project is a little bit more baked, yeah. then feel free to come into our community, post it, share it, We've got lots of people that talk and discuss all different types of... Well, what, what, how, how, how big do you, do you need it well, I was going to say, if I can be so bold, can I, can I uh, offer you a suggestion? Sure. We, we do feel that we are now imminently going to be in possession, say mid-October, of a white paper yep. that is, that is uh, prepped and, okay. and, and, and approved by DLA. Okay. At that point, can I send it to you? Yes. Send it over to me, but more importantly, your technical white paper as well. Okay. But we'll talk to you. Okay. Someday, at some point. Don't don't leave it till Sunday. Make it happen today. Today. Give me a call. Send me a WhatsApp uh, or Telegram. Um, there we go. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, how, how long have you been doing this? Uh, well, the company is four years old. The okay. fintech aspect to it is okay. still helpful. Uh, to your talk on you the ES the ES right? Uh, yes. I'm busy developing uh, infrastructure, well, blockchain infrastructure for virtual reality. Well, they're not virtual reality anymore. It's, um, it's a way in which it's like almost like a supercomputer that you could kind of use and a streaming mechanism that you could kind of use for VR, AR and gaming set up. All decentralized? Well, we want to make the whole concept, the whole thing decentralized. Okay. Welcome to the hardest working man in show business. Are you well? <laughs> hey man, I'm Shane. Nice to meet you. How are you?